All right, folks, good morning. It's Saturday, 9 a.m., February 29th, last day of the month. Price of BTC currently at 86.44. So from yesterday, folks, you know, I told you guys I was taking a 24-hour break from trading because I took three losses in a row. Uh, it's generally my rule of, you know, once I get uh, blown away by the market a couple times, um, usually you just want to step away. I'll reevaluate maybe your strategy, what you're doing wrong, what you're doing right, um, and just clear up your mind, okay? So the point is, um, yesterday I mentioned that even when we broke above this box right here, I stated that, you know, if we're truly supposed to be bullish and go all the way up here, well, we need to come back, test the box real quick, and create a higher high and keep heading up higher, okay? Um, and, you know, I proposed a trade over here when I saw this uh, movement down coming over here. Okay, I stated that it looks like we're coming back to that black box again. And so that means that price is really not that strong. Because if price was really strong, it'd move up, test real quick, and then start taking off. It wouldn't do this, you know, whole garbage movement right here. Like this, come back go up a little bit, clear, create a lower high, and then come back again. All, all this stuff, it, it, it's not supposed to do that, okay, if it's supposed to be bullish. So this is a rule for you to understand when it comes to strength and momentum. It is this. Once a level has been cleared, it just needs to be tapped once and then just start taking off. It doesn't need to be hammered multiple times to ensure that, oh, well, you know, this is a strong level, whatever. You really typically just need, you know, one good retest of the level and then just start taking off. And the reason you require that retest is because what the bots and the algos typically do is they look at this level and they say, hey, there was a significant amount of um, confluence in this area, a key SR level. Uh, and if I have enough money, right, or if we have enough strength to drive this market up, we should just quickly flip this level into support and start driving this up. And I'm just explaining you how the mentality of, you know, the bot would be, right, in this particular case. Um, I'm going to delete that. And so if the algos realize that, hey, it looks like we're having um, unusual activity and strength in thrusting down and pushing down the market, um, it doesn't seem like the market is ready to move back up. We're not having enough inflows from, say, other bots or algorithms to help drive this market up. Um, so it looks like we're going to collapse, okay? And so when it does collapse, what the bot will typically do is it will also then flip uh, short or sell side, and it will add on to the sell-off, okay? So the same bot that helped drive this up, if it's not able to sort of bounce this and push this back up higher, it will uh, essentially help facilitate the drive down, okay? Um, now, why is that important to understand? Well, like I said, right? Key levels, key SR levels are important in that once you typically break up and out of them, you just want to walk away from them. And same thing on the other side, right? So for example, um, when you saw, say for example, this piece of consolidation, I'll give you guys a perfect example, okay? So when you see this piece of consolidation right here, right? What, which, wait a second, right there okay so this key piece of consolidation right here right so price was coming down basically walking down the stairs we call it right walking down the stairs comes back retest that area as resistance and sells off okay that is exactly what you want to see in the other side around too is what if price is supposed to be really strong right over here it's supposed to simply touch a key area as sr level and then walk back up okay now, how did I know this was a key SR level? Well, I told you guys yesterday, when we looked at this area right here, right? I said, hey, look, there's a key area where price from here walked up, bounced off, bounced off again, came back, created a wider range for that box, bounced up again, but created lower high as per this high, and then came into this area and then sold off. And after it sold off, it used that same area as resistance and then sold off some more. And then used that same area as resistance, came back, broke through. So clearly to me, I said, okay, well, 
clearly this is the real sort of pivot area, okay? Price simply keeps moving up and around this area, okay? Now, another way I told you guys to identify this is something like this, okay? Um, wait a second, maybe it was this one right here. Okay, yeah, I don't really like these colors. They're kind of ugly. <laughs> um, I like these colors a little bit more. Um, so anyway, so VPSV, uh, VPSV is a session um, profile, all right? What it does is it says every one of these little bars that you see is telling me that this is the volume transacted in that particular day. <clears throat> so this right here that you see is for this day. Um, what you see over here, over here is for the previous day. What you see over here is for the previous day. Okay, so why is that important? Okay. So it's important because of two reasons. Yesterday, we were above this POC right here. POC meaning point of control. Okay, point of control is typically where a good amount of volume has been transacted. And so typically when you're above the area of the POC, you're bullish. When you're below the area of the POC, you're bearish, okay? Um, now in this particular case, you were temporarily bullish, right? Because you were above this red line right here, okay? Um, when prices started to come back around, like I said yesterday, right? You typically just want one retest and then shoot out of it. But price came back up over here, created lower high on a 30 minute time frame, and then came back inside again. So that over here, price became uh, bearish again because it came down under the POC. Okay. Now over here, when we moved up past this area, we were above the previous day's POC. Okay. Uh, and by the way, if you guys are curious, all you have to do is if you want these little bars right here um, alongside your uh, price action, you just go over here and type in VPSV right there. So session volume is what you need to click on. I don't know what this HD thing is, um, but just click session volume. Okay. So now I want you to look at this area right here. This was yesterday's VPSV and this is yesterday's POC. That's right around 86.20, um, okay? Notice how price is coming back towards yesterday's POC, right? So if you're supposed to be bullish, okay, um, typically what you do is in the new day, as you can see right here, the new day was starting basically over here, right? So the new day, you're above the previous day's POC, you're then above the um, current day's POC, like this red line, okay? Once you start coming back under the, um, current day's POC, and then you start coming back towards yesterday's POC, this tells you that price is weak, okay? This is just one way of identifying the strength and weakness of price action, okay? Um, you know, I, I just wanna show you guys different ways and different techniques to uh, grasp the strength and weakness in price, aside from me showing you that the clear, you know, SR levels like I draw right here, you know, the, the boxes that I draw. Right? You don't really need things like the VPSV or uh, VPVRs or any of that stuff, um, but it does help, okay? Um, because VPSV is, you know, all about price action and volume. Um, it's not, you know, your, your indicator like your MACD or anything, which is actually a lagging indicator. VPSV is directly following price as soon as price moves up and down, okay? Um, any questions so far? What time frame is most valid for the retest? I mean, I probably say, <clears throat> you know, sometimes what will happen, and there's really no hard and fast rule, by the way. Um, sometimes what will happen is this, okay? Price will, you know, uh, hang on one second. Oops, sorry about that. One second, okay. So sometimes what will happen is price will blast through this, uh, this box right here, right? Go all the way up here come back on a one hour time frame and come test it and then start taking off. Sometimes what will happen is price is moving really fast. It quickly comes down for a 15 minute candle and then starts taking off. Okay. So there's really no um, hard and fast rule for what time frame really matters in terms of retest. 
I would probably say it's okay to look at 15 or 30 minute time frames for a retest like that. Okay, because I mean, personally, I think it's enough. Okay, a retest is a retest, in my opinion. I don't think that the bots or the algos are so particular about, hey, we need a retest on a four hour basis or anything. Again, I don't really know internally at like how the bots or algos work. I've just seen them do this <clears throat> work over and over on key levels. So I figure that this is what they're doing. What would be a good sign that the market turns around when it, uh, when I see consecutive higher POC as per the VPSV? Okay, um, that's a great question, Dave. So um, let me turn this VPSV back on. All right. <clears throat> so number one, what you want to see is um, consecutive climbing of levels. Okay. So number one, wh what I mean by that is uh, the POC is increasing. So the next day we want to see the POC somewhere up here. Okay. Higher than this one, not lower. If it comes back lower than the previous day, that means that structurally the price is still kind of weak because remember POC is the point of control, meaning that if the bulls are under control as per the previous day, they would raise where the price is really in control. So they would raise the POC somewhere up here and then keep raising it somewhere up here, right? Um, and let me show you guys if that's sort of visible in the, uh, in the um, Excel as well, okay? So let me show you guys as per the daily first, okay? So you guys see these uh, red, red little lines right here, right in the middle? Not the candle itself, but this little red box. Okay, I want you to pay attention to this red box, okay? And let me know if it's not visible to you. And I'll point it out actually, all right? So let me zoom out of here. Um, this is the daily, right? All right, so on the daily, uh, I don't know why this chart is not loading. <clears throat> Give me one second, folks, okay? So let me see here. Okay. All right. There we go. Finally. Okay. So when the price is moving up, right? Look at where the uh, POC is. So this is uh, February 4th. So I'm going to show you guys where that is. Okay. Here is February 4th. Oops. Right there. Okay. This is the candle for February 4th. Okay. So this is the one we're looking at uh, right here. Right. That doesn't make any sense. Why is this one third? And this one fourth, and this one says, the hell, where is it? Oh, there it is, wait, that is really weird. Okay, I don't know why this is saying the fourth here as this red candle, and this XO is saying the third. Okay, uh, regardless, I mean, we're somewhere near that, right? I I'm trying to make a point here, which is that as price is increasing, okay, what you want to see is, at, you know, you can see the POC, which is that red box, see it right there, right? So a good amount of concentration of volume went into that area, meaning that if the bulls are in control, they would want the next POC above that area, right? Way above. I mean, the, the higher, the better. So you can see the next red box is way up here. And then as price keeps moving up, the next red box is up here. And then the next red box is up here, next red box is up here, and the next red box is up here until we get this big bearish candle right here. And that big bearish candle is this one right here. Okay. And then what happens? Let me see here. And then what happens, right? Let's see. Um, I think that's this candle. I'm sorry. It's not this one, it's this one. So it's on. 10th February, okay? So then what happens? Then we get a big bullish candle again, right? Big bullish candle. The POC is lower here, but price still moves up. And so the following candle right here is really the one that picks up the POC and says, okay, bulls are way up here in terms of control. But then what happens is that we see the next candle being bearish again, okay? Brings the POC down here. The next bullish candle brings the POC slightly above. Okay, so typically what I've seen in my experience is when the POC starts getting tight into an area, that means there's a bit of uh, uncertainty and exhaustion between the bulls and the bears. They're, they're really sort of fighting it out. And so this 
you know, difference between this POC, and this red box and this red box that told me that there's a big fight, big uncertainty in this area. And these three candles right here, I think that's these three right here. And, you know, surprisingly enough, when that sort of uh, battle uncertainty happened, we got that big sell off right there, big red candle. Right. So point is, um, you know, going back to my, um, uh, point of control VPSV, uh, you know, you want to see that P VPSV increasing and you want to see price sort of climbing. Okay. You don't just want to see, you know, one day, uh, price do something like this, like it did yesterday. And then it comes back inside the P POC and then it's now retesting that previous POC. Okay. If price is really supposed to be bullish, it should just take off, take off, retest, take off. It should just keep doing that. Okay. I mean, it's, you know, as simple as um, understanding that the bullish movements of markets, right? If price moves up a little bit, you want to consolidate, move up, consolidate, move up, consolidate, you know, move up. Okay. All right. I hope that answered your question. Okay. So based on this, where are we? Well, we're not really doing anything, right? I mean, I told you guys we we're simply in a range. The range is this high right here, um, 88.50 down to um, 88, or I'm sorry, 85.80. And then I've also put out markers of this lower uh, low right here is about 85.20. And then this high right here around, um, around uh, 89.64. So I'd say largely we're still in this range. I mean, there's really not a whole lot of work being done. Um, if price was supposed to be bullish, folks, this W bottom right here should have just started taking off. Okay. So this to me was a, you know, chance that the bulls are taking that, hey, maybe we gain some strength. We might bounce off this and take off, but a failed attempt, uh, bears came in, stepped up and just drove the price down. Okay. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this price right here hits this key marker. Um, sorry about that. This key marker right here around 8580. If it starts breaking that, um, more than likely we're probably going to be seeing new lows. Okay. Because, um, I don't see if price is going to come down all the way to this 8580 marker, it's probably going to break this 8521. And this is pretty much, I would say the last little point of support that's holding us up until, you know, say the 8200 area or so. Uh, and I told you guys how I come up with that 8200 area. Let me turn this VPSV off. Right. Um, and if we start looking over here, okay, just below this area right here, there's some, you know, good liquidity in terms of long stops, right? Um, and, you know, obviously if we stretch this out a little bit more, this was the last bit of consolidation before we had a big up move, retested the top of this consolidation and then took off. So this is pretty much, I would say the, lar uh, the, the last big key area that price needs to stay above. Um, if it doesn't, you know, for the most part, if this breaks, I'm pretty sure we're going to go to $7,800, um, okay? But again, we don't need to think that far. We just need to watch one level at a time. Uh, and in my opinion, you know, the fact that price is already grinding and breaking down, I wouldn't be surprised if we come down towards $8,200, $8,300. And this is probably where you're going to start seeing um, a lot of players get involved, okay? This area right here, this is where you can start bringing a good amount of people because um, I would say there's a good amount of consolidation done here and here. There is some key support right here, right? So there's probably a lot of players who do not want this price to break. And so I would probably figure a good amount of involvement in, the, in this area. Um, and at the very least, I would expect a little bounce, you know, I don't know how high that bounce is going to be but I would figure there'd be some bounce. I mean, if there's no bounce, then, hey, I, that just means that the bears are really not messing around. They're really just trying to drag this price down all the way straight to 7,900 or maybe even lower, okay? Um, if we start looking at the uh, daily chart, you know, like I mentioned, aside from uh, that 8,200 marker that I told you guys about, if this price kind of heads towards the trend line, you know, towards – uh, the trend line that comes from, let me see here, this bottom right here around uh, February 7th, uh, 2019, and then touching this December 2019 bottom, 
right? If we create that trend line, I mean, you know, we should be hitting that right around $7,500, $7,600 over the next few days, okay? If we're just supposed to go straight down, that is, all right? So that's another key area, you know? So 8,200, 7,900, um, 7,600, those are the areas to watch. Um, obviously price can just reverse from here today, but the way the price is moving right now, given that we had these two, um, you know, dojis, hammers right here, still didn't move price back up. I don't know, I'm pretty sure this is looking like it really wants a breakdown, okay? Um, and by the way, you know, the $7,900 area, that comes from this right here, right? If you look at this key sort of high in this area of six weeks that we spent down here before making that big up move, I would probably say a lot of players will get involved in this area too. So 8,200 does have a good amount of confluence, but the highest confluence would probably be right around here. Okay, this area right here around, um, around uh, $7,700 or so, okay? Um, let's see here. And then obviously if we start pulling out fibs and uh, pivots, you can see we're just doing our best to stay above this pivot, uh, hanging on uh, with dear life. But we've already hammered it three times. I don't see why we're not going to break it. And if we break it, as for the daily fib, the next big support is around $7,600 or so. Okay. So you can see our targets, you know, come to match in many different ways. Okay. Um, what was I trying to do here? Um, I think the monthly open is around, or I'm sorry, the yearly open is around, uh, let me see here. So this is January 1st, right? January 1st, the open is at 7163. So we're gonna mark that out as well, okay? So let's throw that in our chart, right? Um, yearly opens are particularly important because, uh, I'll show you guys in a second, okay? Let's just keep that on the daily. Uh, yearly open, okay, visibility one day. And we're gonna make this 63. Okay, 71.63, okay? So that's the yearly open, all right? Um, that's another area where price could potentially bounce off. And I like this area particularly because of one reason, okay? So let me show you. So let's go to um, fixed range indicator, all right? You're gonna see something really interesting as per this yearly open, okay? Check that out. Look at that red line. Look where it matches. Right, you know, on, on the dot of the yearly open. And again, this POC, this, this high volume node right here, basically says that the most amount of volume in this six week structure was transacted in this area. So if it's not 70, all right, if it's not 8,200 that holds, if it's not 7,900 that holds, if it's not 7,600 that holds, I'm fairly confident that 7,163 or $7,100, that area with some change should hold and should bounce us. And I would figure that just the same way price kind of overshoots to one side when it goes up, I would figure that it's going to torch people to the other side um, and overshoot to the downside all the way to the yearly open, maybe even below, um, and then start moving back up, okay? That is what I would probably figure, okay? If there's really supposed to be the maximum amount of pain to be caused, all right? So th there you have it, folks. I mean, levels to look forward to. Um, aside from, you know, shorting this market, I don't see any particular uh, long positions that you can take. I mean, right now, you know, like I said yesterday even, uh, I told you guys that the best place to get in yesterday was this short position right here, okay? What was it? This short position. We were right over here, right? I said, place your stop above uh, this key high right here and ride this thing down, okay? Ride this thing down to this low or 8,200 low. And if it gets to 8,200, it doesn't bounce, move your stop down to this area right here, maybe like 85, $8,600. Like, and then it becomes, you know, sort of like this. Oops. Then it becomes sort of like this, okay? And then you can keep moving your target down to 7,900. 7,600, uh, 7,150 or $7,100, which is that yearly open, okay? 
So those are really your options. Again, not investment advice, but telling you guys how I would play this market. Um, and I'm going to uh, start looking at positions starting probably today. So we'll see, you know, how it goes. To be honest, I really want to wait, um, wait for tomorrow, which is the weekly open, because usually around the weekly open, we get a good idea of what the price really wants to do. And also given the fact that it's going to be a new month, it doesn't mean we have to continue uh, the bearishness, you know, for all I know, we could just turn around right here tomorrow. Okay. So in this market, you know, waiting is probably going to be um, a good thing if you really want to catch like the big moves. And like I've stated, you know, if you really want to get in on the big moves, this is like the big, big move that I see, you know, the big move that I see is we've already completed a smaller subset of wave five right there, A, B, C. The C could be done here, or it could be done around the golden pocket, which is around 61.8, 65%, right around 7,900, as you can see. Um, and then that completes that wave two, which is the blue. And then that wave three, wave threes are pretty sizable. I mean, more often than not, you know, say for example, the wave one ended here, wave two ends here, like I stated, right? So what you do is you grab the high of the wave one, the low of the wave two, and then you start doing some fib extensions. Okay, this is an extension from this high to this low. And so that tells us that wave three could get to 1.618, which is the extension between this and this, or it could get all the way high to about 2.618, around 15,000 or so. Wave four could pull back maybe around here, maybe a little bit higher. And then that wave five could be, you know, a short one or maybe an even longer one that takes us to 20,000 or 25,000 or something ridiculous, you know? So like I said, I mean, I do believe that if we are in the middle of say the completion of the wave two and the correction of ABC, the wave three that's coming up, maybe, I don't know, next week, next month, um, it's going to be pretty massive. And so all you really do, the, the way I look at wave threes is if you're somehow, you know, able to catch anywhere close to the bottom or somewhere in the middle of wave three, you kind of just set your stop right near the bottom of um, the beginning of wave three and just ride that bad boy up all the way, that multi-thousand dollar movement. Okay. That's it. You know? So I hope this analysis helps you. Um, uh, please rewatch this video for the levels, um, VPSV, start using that. Don't get caught up in the weekend chop folks. I promise you, you're probably going to lose a lot more money than, you know, you can just save and wait it out till Sunday. Okay. So watch the market, watch the ranges we've pointed out, turn on that VPSV, see how it's developing. Um, and that's it. Enjoy your weekend. All right. Cheers.